What's up guys, we are back with a full slate of MLB action here on Thursday, August 1st. Wednesday did not go exactly as planned, guys. Got things off to a bad start with the Rays, minus one and a half. Taj Bradley had a huge letdown in that game. Eventually the Rays lost that one straight up six to two, so not great there. Baltimore did come through with us. A holiday grand slam was cool to see, and they won that game 10 to four. So Baltimore minus one and a half, minus 115. That one came through pretty easily. Big letdown game from the Mets as well. They lost that game 8-3 to three against the Twins. So, yeah, just not very good stuff there from the Mets who'd been playing well. We also saw the Diamondbacks. Man, that was a tough one. It looked like we were in good shape. We had the Diamondbacks minus 5.5 and, and the over 8.5 in that game. And the Arizona Bats really cooled off. They ended up winning that game by only one run. So, minus 1.5 was no good, but we did get to 9 runs. So, that late run got us the win in the over department, but did not get us the win there with Arizona minus 1.5. The Colorado LA Angels game is still going on right now. We've got the over in that game with only three total runs scored there in the bottom of the eighth inning. Not looking too hot in that one. So looking like our first losing day in quite a while, guys. It's going to happen every so often. Let's bounce back and get to work to find some value on this short Thursday slate. Before we jump into the games, hit the like button. Guys, it only takes one second and really helps out the channel. If you like these videos, go ahead and subscribe. It's free and can notify you about new videos or any time that we go live. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description description to go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports. Comment below with any bets you're looking at today and we will give you our best advice on all of them. We are committed to responding to every single comment every day, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our favorite picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day. We've got the Baltimore Orioles going on the road to take on the Cleveland Guardians. Baltimore comes into this game fresh off of a solid 10-4 win there over Toronto. Very, very good stuff. They won three out of four in that series, so has to feel great about that. We did see their third baseman guys break his hand on a hit by pitch, so that's a pretty tough look. Uh, they're bringing some young bats up from the minors and things look okay. I don't think this is going to be a huge issue for them to absorb this loss, but obviously it's never great when you're losing an important piece like that. Baltimore is 65 and 44 on the season, holding on to the top spot there in the AL East, so lots to feel good about there. Unfortunately for the Orioles in this game, we do not have a confirmed starter. We're not sure who they're going to be running out there to start this game. They are seven in the majors in quality start, so that's pretty nice. They're eighth in the majors in batting average against, only allowing opponents to bat 234 against them. They're seventh in whip. Like, there's plenty to feel good about for this pitching staff. Maybe a little bit of inconsistency lately, but not too much. And yeah, I think we can feel pretty decent even if they end up going with a full bullpen start. I mean, they've got a top half of the majors bullpen, a 3.68 bullpen ERA, not a disaster. So if it ends up being a full bullpen start, obviously that won't be our favorite thing to see, but I also don't really really think that is the end of the world. So we're not too worried about the Orioles pitching situation. Obviously, we've got to wait and see, you know, who actually ends up on the mound before we lock this pick in. But generally speaking, not too worried about them pitching. We are very happy with what they're seeing from their bats, guys. Seeing Holiday, a young guy, back up in the majors after struggling in his first stint in the majors this season. He hit a grand slam. He only went one for five, but he did hit a grand slam, so that's pretty promising. The Orioles have scored 10, 6, 4, 11, and 8 runs respectively over their last few games. Seems like this high-powered offense is back on track, guys. They're still third in the majors in runs scored, first in the majors in slugging percentage, a number that just keeps inching higher and higher, which is very, very crazy. A 453 slugging percentage is nuts, guys. They're sixth in the majors with a 254 batting average as a team. Like, that's also very, very respectable. We've seen great stuff from Gunnar Henderson, obviously, this season. And just in general, this is a team that you can definitely trust to hit the ball pretty much regardless of opponent. And yeah, right now, that has definitely been the case. And they have to be in desperation mode to win these games with a very, very tight race there in the AL East. They're taking on the Cleveland Guardians, who come into this game fresh off of a third straight win. They got the 5 to nothing win there in game two of their two games series at Detroit. So great stuff there. Not only Detroit's the toughest opponent right now, but generally speaking, has to feel pretty good for them to get that win. They are handing the ball in this game to Ben Lively, who has been a solid starter for them this season. He's 9-6 and six on the year with a 3.44 ERA on the season. Um, at Phillies, that was his last start, guys. He went six innings, gave up three hits, only a single earned run in a game we eventually saw Cleveland win 3-1. So not a high-scoring game by any stretch of the imagination, but he did pitch really well in that one. Looked good. He's looked great over his last three starts. Starts at Philly, at home against the Padres, and then on the road at Tampa Bay. So, you know, not exactly the toughest slate to go against, but that Philly start is a very, very good one. Absolutely no doubt about that. He's had a pretty decent season, guys. There's really no way around it. 
this 32 year old doing his thing out there also much more impressive than their starting pitching this season has been that cleveland bullpen guys they are absolutely tops in the majors with a 2.47 bullpen er right that is crazy crazy stuff expecting great things from out of this bullpen in the rest of the season as well no reason to think that's going to slow down anytime soon they were just part of a combined shutout so that has to feel good the real questions for this guardian team surround their offensive production we've seen slight downturns i mean not going to even say slight a significant downturn here in the last i would say 60 or so games Quan hasn't had a great time since coming back off the il he had that injury and came back and just really hasn't looked the same he hasn't had a hit in either of his last two games you've got somebody like that at the top of the lineup like that can be a bit problematic like that'll slow the whole offense down he's had a good season overall he was really killing it there earlier in the year but yeah right now not swinging the hottest bat so we're a little bit worried about him we're a little bit worried about Jose Ramirez as well guys I mean he's been doing his thing he kind of had a little bit of a slump there he's busted out of it he just went one for four with a home run there in the last game of this series he hit a double he hit two home runs in game one of this two game series at Detroit and while Detroit's not the toughest team to face guys hitting three home runs over two games that's pretty crazy stuff so feeling good about Ramirez now he seems like he's fully out of that slump and swinging the bat great so we'll see what we get out of this Cleveland offense that is currently 13th in the majors in run scored and 16th in the majors and batting average looking at the numbers for this game guys we've got the baltimore orioles at minus 106 we've got the guardians at minus 110 we've got an over under of nine and a half in this game baltimore they are a very solid road team guys 31 and 19 on the road cleveland though they are a great home team they're actually the best team in the mlb at home guys going 33 and 15 when they're playing on their home field so that's pretty positive stuff in terms of a side in this game it's hard to give a major lean since we don't know who the orioles are going to be starting if this ends up being a full bullpen start from the Orioles I would say that I would lean towards the Guardians minus 110 but we'll have to check back and see on that one in terms of the over under for this game nine and a half feels like a pretty big number I mean I'm expecting decent stuff from Ben Lively obviously the Baltimore Orioles are hitting the ball well right now and kind of so are the Guardians but yeah we see Baltimore 30 17 and 3 to the over on the road Cleveland's actually a significant over team at home they are 26 19 and 3 to the over when playing at home so that's something to take a look at here with both teams showing trends towards the over I actually think this might be a Zach spot where we maybe look at that under nine and a half I don't have enough faith in that to put it in the pinned comment and I also don't know who's starting this game for the Orioles obviously that makes a very big difference in where we're leaning in terms of the side or in terms of the over under so yeah maybe a slight lean towards the under but we don't have all the information yet we're also taking a look here on this short slate at what the teams look like against the run line if you take Baltimore against the run line here if you take a minus one and a half you can get all the way up to plus 145 that seems like a pretty good price Cleveland at plus one and a half at minus 175 is not super appealing. I'd rather just take them to win the game straight up. We do see Baltimore. They are 20 and 30 against the run line on the road. That is a very intriguing number, guys. Really, if we end up getting a starter that we love for the Orioles, we might have to look at taking them against the run line even. You know, th th this could be a tougher game, but... If they're that good against the run line, if they have a good starter out there, they've been swinging the bats well. We also see that Cleveland, not too good against the run line, guys. 22 and 26 against the run line at home. So definite chance we could be looking at the run line in this game. Really no significant lean on this one right now until we find out who's going to be starting this game for the Orioles or if this is just going to be a full bullpen start. Moving right along here, guys, we're looking at the Kansas City Royals going on the road to take on the Detroit Tigers. The Royals come into this one fresh off of a three-game sweep of the Chicago White Sox, guys. That was a series in Chicago, so solid stuff for the Royals playing on the road, not somewhere they've been amazing this season. The Royals are 60-49 and 49 on the year, handing the ball in this game to Seth Lugo, who's had a fantastic season, guys. 12-5 and five on the year with a 2.66 ERA great work there but his last start was a debacle guys against the Chicago Cubs of all teams he had a really tough time six and a third innings five hits six earned runs he did give up a home run in that game two strikeouts two walks definitely not his normal level of control in that one not what we expected to see from him but guys it was one of those let down spots where you see from pitchers so often because he had just pitched a complete game against the White Sox where he gave up three hits and only a single earned run while striking out six over nine innings of work so a long long outing like that right after after pitching in the all-star game has to kind of throw you off your vibe there for the next game which obviously was a tough one against the Cubs so I think we can safely expect a big bounce back performance here from Seth Lugo if you want to look at any props for him I'm expecting very good stuff from him here against the Tigers a team that he did have a great start against back in April that was in April obviously that's a very long time ago but seven innings three hits and nine strikeouts while not giving up any runs in a game the Royals won eight to nothing is pretty crazy stuff so expecting great stuff from Lugo what can we expect from that Royals bullpen well 
It's been a bit problematic, guys. They are down in the bottom half of the league now with a 4.27 bullpen ERA. They're hoping they can get that kind of figured out here towards the end of the season, but hasn't been amazing. Obviously, they didn't have a horrendous time there against the White Sox, but guys, it's the White Sox. So this is going to be a different deal even taking on the Detroit Tigers. Obviously not the best offensive team, but still, we do have some question marks about that Royals bullpen. How do we feel about their offense? Well, they scored 10, 4, and 8 runs respectively there at the White Sox. So pretty solid stuff there. We've seen, you know, Bobby Witt Jr. obviously looking like an absolute monster. Salvador Perez has hit the ball well all season, been very, very consistent. So seeing some good stuff from this, you know, this offense right now. They're 11th in the majors in runs scored, 11th in the majors in slugging percentage. They scored 10, 4, 8, 3, and 4 runs respectively. Didn't have a great offensive series there against the Cubs, so that's a little bit concerning. So we'll see what they can do in this series going up against the Tigers who come into this game losers of four out of their last five in a row. They were clearly sellers here at the trade deadline, not really looking to go for it. They are 52 and 57 on the season. Handing the ball in this one to Keeter Montero, who's one and four this year with a 6.38 ERA. Not great stuff there, guys. His last time out was back on July 26th. He was going up against the Twins. He went five innings, gave up eight hits and five earned runs. He gave up three home runs in that outing. He's given up six home runs total, guys, over his last three starts. Not great stuff. Starts against Minnesota, Toronto, and the Dodgers. So, you know, not the easiest opponents necessarily, but also not the toughest. He's only making, what is this going to be, like his seventh or eighth start of the season. So I guess he's still a little bit early in his season. The guy's only 24 years old, so we're going to expect some inconsistency out there. But yeah, just not somebody I'm super excited to see out there on the mound. We're also not too pumped about that Tigers bullpen, guys. They're pretty much right around the same level as the Royals. A 4.15 bullpen ERA is not great, and it's not exactly exactly like they've been making moves to improve their pitching staff at the moment. So yeah, not expecting great things from their bullpen once Montero has to come out of this game, which, you know, it's not necessarily a lock that he's going to go any more than like four or five innings. So that could get pretty problematic. The Tigers offense has also been terrible, guys. They've scored zero, four, and zero runs respectively over their last three games. That's obviously not great. And for any offense that loses their best hitter, has their best hitter on, you know, the, on the IL, that's not exactly a great look either. We do see Riley Green doing some light fielding work. That was back on Saturday. So, you know, maybe there's a chance he'll end up out there in the not too distant future, but no signs of that being the case for this game. And without him, this offense has looked even worse. They're down to 27th in the majors in batting average and 28th in the MLB and on base percentage, getting on base at a 296 clip. That does not feel good, guys. That cannot be a good feeling for a team that's, you know, just really been struggling here down the stretch. So looking at the numbers for this game, no major surprises here. We see the Royals at minus 170, the Tigers at plus 145. We've got over under showing out there of eight or eight and a half. The Royals are only 24 and 27 on the road, guys, but that's a number that's been steadily getting better over, I would say, the last 40-ish games, something like that. Detroit, they're 25 and 28 on the at home. Probably not a number that's going to get way better here as the season uh, progresses. Obviously, this is a team that feels like they're tanking. I know tanking, you know, not supposed to be as much of a thing in the MLB as it is in sports like the NBA and stuff like that, but right now, Detroit not exactly putting themselves in position to win games. In terms of the over under for this game, seeing eights and eight and a halfs out there. The Royals are 29, 19, and three to the under on the road. That's actually an MLB best number to the under when playing away from home. Detroit is 28, 23, and two to the over at home. So yeah, not exactly super stoked about either one of these numbers that's floating around out there for the over under. Very unlikely to be on the over under for this game. We also see the Royals against the run line, guys. They are 28 and 23 against the run line on the road. That's pretty solid stuff, guys. I mean, I expect them to have a good chance in this game, and especially going up against a Tigers team that doesn't have much to play for right now and is only 22 and 31 against the run line at home. That is pretty weak stuff, guys. And if you take the Royals minus one and a half, you can get them at plus 100. That seems very, very nice, guys. Go ahead and give me the Royals in this game. If you wanted to take a minus 170, I could understand that, not wanting to get greedy, but I think I personally am going to get greedy and take the Royals minus one and a half. I think that's the best play in this game, and it's honestly looking like one of the best plays on this entire slate. Next on the docket, we're looking at the Miami Marlins going on the road to take on the Atlanta Braves. The Marlins come into this game fresh off of a win there. They looked pretty good in that 6-2 win over Tampa Bay. That was on the road. They're coming, you know, heading on another road trip. They're going to be playing, what is that, their sixth game? Yeah, sixth game in a row on the road at Atlanta, so not exactly a cupcake situation. The Marlins did not do anything to get better. They did plenty of things to get worse there at the trade deadline, so we'll see what happens for them here in the, you know, the back end of the season. They're hitting the ball to Max Meyer in this game, who 
who's 2-0 on the year with a 3.00 ERA. He's coming off of a pretty mediocre start there, guys, against the Brewers. Four innings of work, four hits allowed, three earned runs given up. He had a home run in that one. He walked two and struck out three. Definitely a big step back from the last time he took on Atlanta where he was dominant, guys. Six innings. Six hits allowed, only a single earned run, and he struck out seven in a game that we eventually saw the Marlins win 5-1. to one. That was part of his first three starts of the year where he looked very, very good, but unfortunately for him, guys, those starts were back in April. So we'll see if he can carry that over and find some success here. Obviously, having a bad start right out of the gate against Milwaukee isn't a great look, and yeah, that's some kind of ancient history there with his success against Atlanta. So we'll have to take that with a big old pinch of salt to see if he can have, you know, such a good outing against them again. In terms of their bullpen, the Marlins bullpen over the course of the season. Obviously, you know, things aren't exactly the same for them right now, but a 3.76 bullpen ERA currently out of the pen is not a disaster, obviously, but yeah, this team, they were big sellers at the trade deadline, guys. Not exactly a team that, you know, not, not motivated to win at the moment, not really trying to win, just trying to build for the future and get some young guys, some experience up in the major leagues, see what they've really got out there. That's been the case for their offense as well, which has had some positives this season. Unfortunately for the Marlins, a lot of those positives just got traded away here at the trade deadline, but yeah, I mean, not an offense that we're super high on right now, guys. They were already 29th in the majors in runs scored over the course of this season and 29th in the majors in slugging percentage. They're also second to last in on base percentage this year, getting on base at a 291 clip. They have hit the ball, I would say, all right lately. I mean, six, three, two, seven, and six runs respectively over their last several games. Yeah, yeah, I'm not expecting those kind of numbers to really continue right now for the Marlins, who clearly not a team that's super committed to putting a competitive roster out there on a daily basis. So we'll see what they can do here going up against the Atlanta Braves, who just won two out of three at Milwaukee. Now they get to go back home to take on the Marlins. They're 58 and 49 in the year, six and a half games back at the Phillies there in the NL East. They're hitting the ball in this game to Charlie Morton, who's five and six on the season with a 4.16 ERA. His last time out, guys, an absolute debacle against the Mets. Two and two-thirds innings pitched, six hits allowed, seven runs total allowed. Only five of them were earned, but he gave up three home runs in that game. A major departure from what we've seen from him, generally speaking, this season. I mean, his four starts previous to that were all very, very reasonable outings. So I think we can find him here in something of a bounce-back position. Obviously, you know, there could be something wrong. This could end up being a more prolonged struggle, but I would think going up against the Marlins would be a pretty decent get-right spot for the guy that is, uh, you know, often called Uncle Charlie. The last time he went against Miami was back in April, and he didn't have a good time against them, but this is a completely different team at this point, and that's some pretty ancient history. So we'll see what we get from Charlie Morton in this game. He's a starter that I feel decent about, maybe not super, super confident, but obviously we feel great about that Atlanta bullpen, guys. A 2.97 bullpen ERA. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. They've been the second best bullpen in the majors basically all season long. So certainly no problem there. A problem that has kind of haunted this team this season, generally speaking, is offensive production. But they've scored six, five, and three runs respectively over their last few. They scored nine and four runs over the last two games of their series against the Mets. So nothing too terrible there. They are 21st in the majors in runs scored. So that's not great. But 12th in slugging percentage, 18th in batting average. Obviously, Marcel Ozuna is an absolute monster up there at the plate, so give him plenty of credit. He's coming off of a game where he only went one for five, so that's not great, but he's had hits in each of his last five games, like not too worried about how Ozuna's swinging the bat right now, and not too worried about this Braves offense, although they are going up against somebody that gave them some trouble earlier in the season. By earlier, I mean infinitely earlier, though. So looking at the numbers for this game, we've got the Marlins at plus 168. We've got the Braves at minus 200. We've got an over-under in this game of eight and a half. The Marlins are only 18 and 34 on the road. Obviously, that's not a great look. Atlanta is a good home team, guys. They are 30 and 21 at home. So in general, in the side, no big shocker here. I am leaning towards the Braves minus 200. Did not like what I saw from Max Meyer here in his first start back up in the big leagues after, you know, being up very early in the season. So we'll see what we get out from these two starters, but I'm leaning towards the Braves in terms of the side. In terms of the over-under, kind of surprisingly, we actually see both teams leaning towards the under right here. Miami is 29-22-1 and one to the under when playing on the road. Atlanta is 32-18-1 and one to the under at home. So these are big, big under trends, guys. And if you have some faith here in Max Meyer to have another good outing like he had early in the year against Atlanta, I think under eight and a half could be in play in this game. I don't think I love it, though. Looking at the run line for this game, we see Miami, they're actually a 50-50, like 26 and 26 against the run line playing at home. We see Atlanta is actually a big underdog against the run line at home. Guys, they are 21 and 30 against the run line when playing at home. So 
Generally speaking, if you wanted to take a little look at the Marlins plus one and a half, you take them plus one and a half, you can get them at like minus 105 or something like that. That might be worth something of a look against a Braves team that's not very good against the run line. And, you know, if you think Charlie Morton is going to struggle again, maybe get that extra run and a half could do you some good. Generally speaking, in this game, I don't have a ton of great leans. I would say I lean slightly towards the Marlins in that plus one and a half since they're, you know, swinging the bats fairly well right now, even, you know, since this team is kind of gutted at the trade deadline. Overall, this is more of a stay away spot for me than anything else. Moving right along here, guys, we're looking at the St. Louis Cardinals going on the road to take on the Chicago Cubs. The Cardinals coming to this game fresh off of winning back-to-back -back games there against the Rangers. They lost game one of that series six to three, then won the next two games to eight to one and 10 to one respectively. So Cardinals seeing great returns from that trade immediately here out of the gate. Fam drove in two runs in his second game. Like he's gotten off to a hot start back in a Cardinals uniform. That is great to see for Cardinals fans. St. Louis is 56 and 52 on the year, only five games back of Milwaukee there in the NL Central. So they've still, you know, got a chance to make this into a competitive race. They're handing the ball to Sonny Gray in this game, somebody they need to turn things around. He's 10 and 6 on the season with a 3.79 ERA, but his last four starts have all been pretty concerning, guys. And for somebody that, you know, was looking like an absolute ace early in the year this is not an encouraging trend he's allowed five five three and five earned runs respectively over his last four starts and those are two starts against the nationals a start against the cubs and a start at atlanta so yeah getting to go up against the cubs again a team that he looked okay against back on the 12th i mean seven innings nine hits and three earned runs while striking out six and walking zero not exactly a dominant performance but not a disaster his team the cardinals should have had a chance to win that game they really just didn't do anything at the plate they lost that one five to one so We'll see what we get out of Gray in this game. I mean, he only has... Yeah, he's got two starts against the Cubs this year. The first one was dominant back in May. The second one just the other day back on the 12th, not so hot. So we'll see what we get from Sonny Gray. We'll also see what we get from this Cardinals bullpen. That looks pretty good, guys. A 3.61 bullpen ERA is very, very good work for a bullpen that started off doing terrible early in the season. Obviously, the last couple games, they've looked great. So we'll see if they can, you know, like keep that rolling here in this series against the Cubs, a team that they could definitely use some wins against, a team that's currently in last place in the NL Central. The Cardinals back have really come alive 18 runs combined over their last two games taking advantage of the texas rangers they've made some moves to you know improve here and things are looking good seeing mcgreevy have such a great debut has to feel great so yeah looking pretty good here for the cardinals that are up to 13th in the majors in batting average and 19th in the majors in on base percentage maybe not the scariest offensive lineup necessarily but they're headed in the right direction i think we could see some of these veteran guys get going here in the you know towards the end of the season since they didn't have a hot beginning of the season and a lot of these young guys and I mean, Tommy Pham is obviously hitting the cover off the ball right now. So expecting decent things from the Cardinals offense going into this game against the Cubs, who come into this one fresh off of a 13 to four win there against Cincinnati to win one out of three in that series at 52 and 58, 10 games back there in the NL Central, not really where they want to be. Obviously seeing Cody Bellinger back out there has to be pretty nice. Ian Happ hit a two run home run in that win over the Reds. So that had to feel pretty good. And just in general, it doesn't feel like all hope is lost yet in Chicago. They're handing the ball to Shota Imanaga in this game. He's eight and two this season with a 2.95 ERA. He's coming off of a decent start at Kansas City, guys. Five and two thirds innings, six hits, three earned runs. Not his best stuff. I mean, he got off to a great start after the All-Star break, shutting down the Diamondbacks. Looked good there in the All-Star game. So not a lot of complaints for me about Imanaga this season. Obviously, he's put up a very good numbers. The last time he faced the Cardinals was back on June 15th. Seven innings, four hits, only a single earned run allowed. So very, very good stuff from Imanaga in that game. No doubt about it. The Cubs bullpen is a little bit problematic, guys, but a 3.71 bullpen ERA, obviously not the end of the world. Not a bullpen that we're super scared to trust. You know, this, you know, they get handed a lead even against a team, especially against a team like the Cardinals. I don't think they're going to be too worried to hand it off to the pen here, and I'm sure they expect a fairly long outing from Imanaga. The Cubs offense has been a problem, but it seems like now that they're getting healthy, maybe things could be on the upward tilt. They just scored 13 runs in their last game, but 13, 3, 1, and 7 runs. Like, they had a great offense offensive series at Kansas City, except for getting shut out in the first game. You know, kind of an inconsistent offense, 24th in the majors in runs scored, 26th in the majors in batting average, batting 232 as a team, 25th in the majors in slugging percentage. Like, these are all numbers they're going to need to drastically improve if this team wants a shot at playing in the postseason. So we'll just have to see what they can do here going up against the Cardinals and Sonny Gray. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Cardinals at minus 104, the Cubs at minus 112. We've got an over-under of eight in this game. The Cardinals are 27 and 27 on the road. The Cubs are still a slightly over 500 team at home. They're 27 and 25 at at home in terms of the side in this game guys it's really tough to pick i would say i'm leaning maybe slightly towards the cardinals since they've got the better bullpen 
I do expect them to hit the ball okay. Maybe not against Imanaga, but maybe against the Cubs' bullpen. But yeah, it's a pretty tough spot. That's an extremely small lean. Honestly, you could make a case for any team here in terms of the side, in terms of the over-under for this game. We see both teams showing trends towards the under. The Cardinals are 29, 22, and 3 to the under on the road. The Cubs are 30, 21, and 1 to the under at home. We've got an over-under of 8 in this game. I definitely expected it to be 7.5 or 7. So definitely leaning towards under 8. I think that might be the best value in this game. In terms of the run line, we do see the Cubs are terrible against the run line at home, guys. Absolutely awful. 18 and 34 versus the run line when playing at Wrigley Field. The Cardinals, 27 and 27 against the run line on the road. So that's fairly reasonable stuff there. Unfortunately, guys, you have to take the Cardinals minus one and a half in this spot. If you take a minus one and a half, you can get them all the way up to something like plus 160. So yeah, that would be pretty wild stuff. Not really too interested in that. If you get the Cardinals at plus one and a half, it's something at minus 225 or something crazy like that. So not too interested in the run line in this game, guys. Very much, though, interested in that under eight. That seems like a pretty solid spot in a game where I'm not expecting there to be much offense. Last but not least on this extremely short Thursday slate, guys, we're looking at the Colorado Rockies going on the road to take on the Los Angeles Angels. Game two of this series saw the Rockies get that 2-1 to one win at the Angels. Crazy to see that game only have three total runs scored with the Rockies coming out on top. So they'll take it. They needed it to snap a long losing streak. They're 39-70 and 70 on the year, so not exactly having the best time. Obviously not a team that was expected to compete this season, but still, you would have hoped for a little bit better from them if you were a Rockies fan. They're handing the ball in this game to Ryan Feltner, who's won and 10 this season with a 4.99 ERA. He is coming off a good start at the Giants, guys. Six innings pitched, four hits allowed, only a single earned run allowed. Definitely two pretty good outings from him against the Giants there. Honestly, his last five starts have all looked very, very reasonable. Even a good start against the Brewers back on July 2nd. So seeing much better things from Feltner despite his, you know, pretty poor season long numbers. And, you know, he probably doesn't feel terrible going up against the Angels right here. I mean, he hasn't faced them yet this season, and they're not the toughest hitting team, so it probably feels like he's got a decent chance to put up a solid outing out there. The question is, what will we see from this Rockies bullpen once he comes out of the game? They've been the worst bullpen in Major League Baseball this season. It hasn't been particularly close. A 5.59 bullpen ERA. Not, you know, not what you want. Not what you're looking for from your bullpen. So it's a lot of the onus for winning games is going to fall on the Rockies starters and on their hitters, guys. They need to put up plenty of offense. Obviously, scoring two runs and winning a game is not the norm for them. They have scored two, seven, four, zero, one, and four runs respectively over their last couple of series. They're 16th in the majors in runs scored, which doesn't look so bad, but until you take into account that they get to play half of their games at Coors Field, that, you know, kind of makes those numbers shrivel up a little bit. They're 15th in the majors in batting average, batting 244 as a team. They're 13th in the majors in slugging percentage, but, you know, the Coors Field inflation of those numbers is definitely something that exists. So we'll see what we actually get from them. This one, I mean, Brenton Doyle hitting that 431 foot go ahead home run there against the Angels in game two. Had to feel pretty great for him and for the Rockies, but generally speaking, not an offense that I'm excited about. They'll go up against the Angels in this game who had been playing okay. I mean, they'd won two in a row before taking that loss. They're 47 and 61 on the year, so not exactly killing it. They're, you know, 13. They're only nine games back in the AL West, so I guess they could talk themselves into the idea they have some sort of chance, but doesn't really seem like a real thing to me. They're handing the ball in this game to Carson Fulmer, who has yet to figure in a result this season, apparently. Oh yeah, he's only making his third start of the year. His first two were serviceable. They were both against the Oakland A's. He didn't give up more than three earned runs in any of them. We saw the Angels go one and one in those games, so you know, okay stuff. We got a guy that's working the way, his way into a season. He's 30 years old, so you know, a veteran guy out there expecting decent stuff from him in this game, but he's shown some control issues early in this season. He's given up a home run in each one of his outings, so yeah, maybe not somebody that we're super high on in this game. We're also not super high, guys, on that Angels bullpen. They are, what, 24th, 25th in the majors with a 4.34 bullpen ERA. Obviously, guys, a lot better than the Rockies. I'm not saying they're worse than the Rockies bullpen. That's crazy talk, but not a very good bullpen. So not expecting miracles from the pen. Also not really expecting miracles from this Angels offense that only scored one run in their last game. They had been hitting the ball well, but Pretty, pretty inconsistent, guys. They've scored 1, 10, 8, 1, and 4 runs, respectively, over their last few games. They're 26th in the majors in runs scored, 22nd in the majors in batting average, batting 236 as a team. Just not an offense that I can really get excited about. They miss Mike Trout pretty bad. Sounds like he's pretty much done for the season at this point, I would think. And just not a lot of positives to find here for the Angels at the plate. And look at the numbers for this game, guys. We see the Rockies at plus 110, the Angels at minus 120. We've got an over-under of 9 in this game. The Rockies are only 14 and 41 on the road. So a terrible, terrible road 
road team, but the Angels not exactly a great home team. They're 24 and 32 at home. So yeah, not a lot of great stuff there. We also see some interesting trends towards the over. I mean, the Angels are 26, 28, 26, and two to the over at home, but the Rockies are 32, 22, and one to the over on the road. Not really interested in the over-under for this game, to be honest. I would shade maybe even towards the under after that weird game, but really don't trust that one either way. In terms of the run line for this game, we do see, interestingly enough, that the Angels are 31-25 and 25 against the run line at home. We see the Rockies are 24-31 and 31 against the run line on the road. In terms of the run line, guys, this seems like kind of a weird spot. I mean, if you take Colorado minus 1.5, that's out there. Plus 1.5, if you take them plus 1.5, you can get them at minus 178. Like, that's not amazing. The Angels, minus one and a half, also not a super appealing spot for me. Generally speaking, I do like the Rockies plus 110 in this game a good amount. Feltner's been throwing the ball great. I'm not very impressed with what I've seen from Carson Fulmer so far right now. Maybe you would want to take a look at the Rockies maybe in the first five or something like that so you dodge their whole bullpen situation, but the bullpen's coming off of a not terrible showing yesterday, so we'll see what we get. Generally speaking, on this very short slate, though, I do think there's some value on taking the Rockies plus 110. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.